good. You see, I have off all kinds of insect spray. Next Sunday, we are going to be collecting these. They need it down at the coast terribly. Evidently, the mosquitoes and bugs are horrible with all the water. So remember when you go to the store to bring this next Sunday, and they will be shipped sometime next week down to the coast. And also, if you want to um, give to UMCOR, we more than gladly accept your money. I know that a uh, little over $2,000 were collected for UMCOR from our church, and we greatly appreciate it. Our pastor was astonished, and it was not a big amount. It was in amounts of 5 and $10. Your output was wonderful, and we thank you so much. Remember, today is UMW Sunday, and we are providing a lunch of our fabulous, famous chicken spaghetti, green bean salad, chocolate cake, Marilyn. <laughs> For all of you that don't know, my daughter loves chocolate cake. Georgia Bell can tell you a story about it. And we invite everyone to come and participate in the in the meal after the service. I would like to open with Psalm 100. Shout for joy to the Lord all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful song. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving his courts with praise, give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Let us open with a word of prayer. Our most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We ask that you bless this service all that is said, all that is sung, all the music that is played, be inspiring to our congregation, Lord, and may it be the words you would have us say, and it will meet each and every heart that is here. For we ask it in thy precious name. Amen.
and standing for the United Methodist Women's Purpose that you will find in your bulletin. The United Method, the organized unit of the United Methodist Women shall be a community of women whose purpose is to know God and to experience freedom as whole persons through Jesus Christ, to develop a creative, supportive fellowship, and to expand concepts of mission through participation in the global ministries of the church. You may be seated. And if the children will come, we'll have children's moments. Reese? Um, uh, <laughs> what do you want to happen? What would you like to happen? Um, you want to think about it? Okay. I'm done you. I'm done you. You want to do it? Okay. <laughs> okay, good job. All right, Ms. Hannah, we'll let you go. Um, to help people that might be affected by Hurricane Irma. Okay, that's a good hope. All right, we're going to switch it now. All right, that's what a hope for you. And that's loud now. Uh, what is the hope that you think your parents have for you? Take those out. Oh. To donate money. Oh, that's a very good hope, yes. Did you have one? Okay. You have one, Preston? Courage. Do what? Courage. Courage. Okay, you have to have courage to help other people, don't you? Yes. My mom and dad getting rich so I can get my own room finally. Okay, okay. She wants her own room finally. <laughs> Wonder Woman. Go to sleep. What? Don't yell. It's already loud. Ah. Uh -huh. So what would you like? Go to sleep. Go to sleep. Okay. <laughs> All right. We'll go with that one. Okay. Well, you know that God has hope for us too. He does. He hopes that we'll be good. He hopes that we will let Him into our hearts. He hopes that we will. Obey the Ten Commandments. He hopes that we will love one another. <laughs> and he hopes that you will mind your parents. 
Yes. How many of you mind your parents? How many of you mind them all the time? Better not see one hand up. <laughs> Thank you. He hopes you tell the truth, too. Okay, let's say a prayer. All right, we got one more. When people ask for forgiveness, you should, you should forgive them. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, let's say a prayer. Dear God, Dear God we thank you for hope. We thank you for hope. And we thank you for compassion. And we thank you for compassion. Help us to help others. Help us to help others. Help us to help ourselves. Help us to help ourselves. To be a better person. To be a better person. To be more loving. To be more loving. And more caring. And Lord, thank you for the women. Of the United Methodist Church, that give their all to help others. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Let's go, guys. If the ushers will come forward, we'll receive the offering. Able as we sing Spirit Song.
There's a list in your bulletin on the right panel of prayer requests, and we ask that you would take this home with you, uh, lift these uh, needs up when you have your prayer time. Just keep these people and their families in your hearts and in your prayers. We have an additional request to add to the list, and that is for the family of Verna Lee Jones. Verna Lee passed away yesterday, and she is with her Lord in heaven today celebrating and whole and healthy and uh, we just uh, celebrate her life and ask for comfort and peace for her family are there any other prayer requests if not if you'll bow your head please father god we just thank you for this opportunity to be in your presence to worship you, glorify you, and give you the praise that is always due for the blessings that you give us, for the gifts, for the, the grace that we don't deserve, but you shower us with it in your mercy. And we thank you for that, Lord, for your love and forgiveness. We thank you. We ask for prayers, Lord, now for those in Florida and 
surrounding areas that would be affected by Hurricane Irma, that you would protect them, provide for their every need, watch over them, Lord. Uh, it's a natural disaster we can't control, Lord. We've experienced it here in Texas, and we ask that you be with those people as well who've been affected by the flooding, by the damage, that you would provide for their needs, that you would smooth the paths uh, that they have to follow in order to restore their homes, uh, just watch over them, protect them from injury and illness, Lord, as they deal with a, a storm-ravaged area. Father God, we lift up those people in other parts of the world who've even been affected by these hurricanes, by flooding, by earthquakes. Lord, uh, your power will prevail. You will show your glory through the provision of your people and your love and your mercy as you provide for them. And we just ask these things for all involved. We ask for healing for those who are ill. We ask for strength and comfort and peace for those who are in grief, Lord, in mourning. We ask for uh, protection for our troops as they uh, serve our country and protect our freedoms, Lord, that you would watch over them, be with them. We ask for wisdom and discernment for our leadership, Lord, we at state, local, our country. Lord, just be with our leaders. Grant them wisdom. Guide them. Guide their paths. Show them what is best for all involved. Father God, you gave us the perfect prayer, and we say it now together for your glory and honor. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen If you would stand as you are able this morning as we sing There's Within My Heart a Melody.
and I hope there's a, a melody in your heart, and it keeps you singing every day because that's what God wants. He wants you to sing and let his praises be known. Sharing, let it be. As you know, this time last year, we were celebrating our UMW Sunday, and we were also celebrating with Elsie Dowden, her 75th year in United Methodist Women. And uh, Elsie was 99 at that time. She turned 100 in September of last year, the 29th. And this spring, Elsie went to her eternal reward in heaven. But Elsie left us years of devotionals that she had written and wrote for us. And I asked her if she would write a year's worth of devotions or write devotions for UMW because we always used hers in our meetings. And she said, well, I cannot talk anymore. If you will read them, I'll write them. I said, okay, that's a deal. So I would like to share with you one of her last devotionals, and it's entitled, Let It Be. Isaiah wrote, in that day you will say, I will trust and not be afraid. That's Isaiah 12, 1 and 2. A song written by Paul McCartney, Let It Be, has become a reminder in my life as I age. I am 99 years old. Next month, September the 29th, 2016, I will be 100 years old, and, after, and often there comes the awareness that I am not able to do all the things that I once could. I am reminded of this almost daily through the years, I have enjoyed and been responsible for many things, caring for my family, being the wife of a minister. I have been very active in various activities of the church, especially the United Methodist Women. I have seen it reaching out from the Missionary Society to Woman Society of Christian Service to our present day United Methodist Women a span of over 75 years. So now has come the time to let it be. It has become obvious that I am no longer able to do what I had done in the past. This was difficult for me to accept. Again and again, my children would say, Mother, let it be. Now it is me and my life faced with circumstances that I have not faced before. It is time to put my trust to the test. I have discovered in new ways that the promises of God are true, and day by day God is enabling me to let it be in hands that are much more capable and caring than mine. So I am going to let it go and trust. Just let it be in God is my trust, Elsie Dowden. Elsie was pretty special to me. She welcomed me with open arms when Ronnie and I came into this church after our retirement. And we had a kind of a special bond since I was the past uh, minister's wife. And uh, she was from another conference and I was in the Central Texas Conference. so. We compared our conferences, but it was an extra special blessing. We'll all re remember her with special memories. The UMW presents pens to special people in our congregation. And today, I just found out who it was. I didn't know who it was. It's it's done by voting uh, on written papers, and I and the treasurer sends off, and I finally got the, uh, she fin Norita finally got the pens this week. And um, so I would like to present this pen, and the other one's not here. We have two pens to Michael and Phyllis Brown. Uh, their special work that they do here in the church. 
Phyllis, if you will come forward.
introduction of speaker. <laughs> what do I say? <laughs> she is my daughter, my firstborn, and my true, true daughter who is always beside my side. All my children are as far as that goes, but you know there's something special about daughters. I know my son's sitting over here and he's extra special. <laughs> my son-in-law is sitting over here and he's extra special. But Marilyn just beams when I have problems. I talk to her. She's my sounding board. She is very involved in her church. She was singing in her choir, but now she's doing this, this, and this, and so I hope she gets back to singing in her choir for at least Christmas. But she is one of the, I, I don't know what to say about her other than she likes chocolate cake. <laughs> she likes chocolate, period. But I would much like to say Marilyn, we enjoy having you here, and I know you will enjoy listening to her, Marilyn. Can I move this? Because <laughs> I'm taller than her. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much for allowing me to be here today. Um, I count you as family. Y'all love my mama, and, um, and I love you. Um, she means the world to me, and so I am very honored to be here. Um, she said earlier, and I told Billy Carroll, mom said earlier she wanted today to be perfect, and I told her that I'm speaking, so it's clearly not going to be perfect. <laughs> but, um, and before I start, I want to give a Kai story. Kai is uh, mine and Tom's youngest grandson, mom's youngest great-grandson. We actually only have grandsons, so uh, he's our youngest grandchild as well. My daughter-in-law, Renee's uh, grandfather, passed away this past week, and they left yesterday for Wisconsin for the funeral, which is tomorrow. And so they flew out last night, but Saturday morning, uh, Dustin and Renee told Kai that his Papa T-Rex, as he called him, that his Papa T-Rex had passed away. And Kai asked, he said, Mom and Dad, can Papa T-Rex receive text messages in heaven? He said, I want to tell him goodbye and that I'll see him when I get there. <laughs> and he's five, and what I want you to understand is it's never too young to teach our children there is a God. It's never too young to tell them that there's a heaven because they're smart and they'll get it. Today is a day we recognize the United Methodist women. Today's their day. And for you ladies who are not involved and can be involved, I challenge you to take a step and say yes. While this is UMW Day, I hope and pray that the message resonates with everyone because it's meant for everyone here. My husband, Tom, and I are very involved in our compassion ministry at church. It's called Bethesda Cares. And when mom comes to Fort Worth, she also is involved with Bethesda Cares. She doesn't really have a choice, but she's involved. And we have Bethesda Cares t-shirts. And the only way you can get one is if you volunteer. Mom has earned her t-shirt. And our mission statement is to be Christ's hands and feet extended to those at a unique point of need. And I believe UMW has that same vision. I know we read their purpose statement earlier, but I believe that UMW ministers and reaches those who are hurting, who are in need, and to spread the gospel, and they have faith that God will help them. I don't know about you, but on a regular basis, I discover that I need my faith challenged. I am perfectly capable all on my own to get in a rut, pass my own judgment, only to discover later that God had a whole different direction for me, and I just didn't listen. 
I succumb to thinking that because something's never, ever happened, that it never will, that I've lost my faith that God will make things come to pass. And I become comfortable with the status quo. And then thankfully, in God's incredible grace, he'll put me in my place to be inspired to go beyond myself or to be reminded that he is bigger than I ever thought or could imagine. As our pastor says at home, he says, but God. There are always but God moments, things when we never thought it could happen, but God showed up. We cannot and we should not limit God. Before I read 1 Samuel 14, 6, which is the text for today, I just want to provide a little background. It is in the Old Testament, and the scripture tells us that Saul was 30 years old when he became king, and he reigned for 42 years. And in chapter 13 of 1 Samuel, Saul is about to face the Philistines, his greatest enemy. 1 Samuel 13, 5 says, The Philistines mustered a mighty, mighty army of 3,000 chariots, 6,000 charioteers, and as many warriors as the grains of sand on the seashore. Can you even imagine how many people that is? Can you imagine the grains of sand on the Gulf Coast? That's how big the Philistine army was. Saul finds himself facing a massive enemy, and his army was hiding. 1 Samuel 13, 6 says, The men of Israel saw what a tight spot they were in, and because they were hard-pressed by the enemy, they tried to hide in caves, thickets, rocks, holes, and cisterns. 1 Samuel 14, 2. Meanwhile, Saul and his 600 men were camped at the outskirts of the city around a pomegranate tree. Verse 3, and no one realized Jonathan had left the camp. Where did Jonathan go? This is the text for today. It's 1 Samuel 14, 6. Let's go across to the outpost of those pagans, Jonathan said to his armor bearer. Perhaps, perhaps is the key word, Perhaps the Lord will help us, for nothing can hinder the Lord. He can win a battle whether he has many warriors or a few. Jonathan didn't know if the Lord would show up, and yet he left the camp, he and his armor bearer, two men, to meet the Philistines. Perhaps the Lord would meet him. He had faith that the Lord would show up. What would you have said if Jonathan had asked you, only you and him, to meet as many men as the grains of the sands of the ocean? Would we have gone? Would we have had faith that God would show up? In other words, would we have gone? Would we have set things aside? I wonder if Jonathan thought, enough of sitting under the pomegranate tree, enough of doing nothing, enough of the status quo. Today, we need to say, perhaps the Lord will help us. Many of the hymns we sing today were written by Fanny Crosby, who was a great woman in the Methodist church. Blessed assurance, draw me nearer, to God be the glory, I am thine, O Lord. She wrote nearly 9,000 hymns. How many of you know that she was blind? At the age of six weeks old, a traveling doctor came. She had an infection in her eye, and um, he didn't take care of her appropriately, and she was blinded at the age of six weeks old. She could have been angry, but I think she said perhaps the Lord will show up. She said, it's written that she said, it seemed intended by the blessed providence of God that I should be blind all my life, and I thank him for this dispensation. If perfect earthly sight were offered me tomorrow, I would not accept it. It might not have, I might not have sung hymns to the praise of my God if I had been distracted by the beautiful and interesting things about me. 
it's good for us to remember that we should praise our God in the good times and in the bad times. Our Lord deserves our praise no matter how we feel. Another Methodist woman, Alma Matthews, made Ellis Island her mission field. She and the Women's Home Missionary Society spent 40 years meeting the boats and making sure that new Americans had clothing, a meal, and a bed to sleep in. And they showed compassion. What if Alma had just sat under the pomegranate tree like Saul and his 600 men? What would have happened to the single women who came through Ellis Island? If you're involved in UMW here at Clifton, would you raise your hand? I want y'all to know I thank these women for their service, for their sacrifice. It's not always easy volunteering and for their commitment to Christ. I believe these women, just like Alma Matthews, just like Fanny Crosby, just like Jonathan, when he faced the Philistines, perhaps the Lord will meet us. What I didn't say earlier is when Jonathan and his armor bearer went to meet the Philistines, every Philistine was slain. God met them there, and a great earthquake occurred, and the entire Philistine army was defeated. All because Jonathan said, perhaps the Lord will meet us. There are men and women in this church who are not sitting on their hands, who with God's help are making a difference. Thank God we have men and women who have the courage to say, this is what God wants us to do. This is what God wants. He wants the victory. How many of you know, and I know y'all know this, we are living in a moment where we need people to stop sitting. We need people to get up from the pomegranate tree and do something for God. We still serve a living God who breaks the power of canceled sin, who sets the prisoner free, and his blood can make the vilest clean. We can't and we should not just sit under the pomegranate tree anymore. Perhaps the Lord will meet us and help us reach our neighbors, reach those we work with, reach our children, reach our city. There are so many ways we can step out. They don't have to be dra dramatic ways. We can do it with a smile, a kind word, meeting a need. It doesn't take much. My youngest son, Kirk, who is now 29, but when he was a teenager, he and I went shopping at the mall, and we were standing in line to check out. I think it was actually at Dillard's. We were waiting in line to check out. And the lady in front of us, I smiled at her, and I said, how are you today? And she ended up telling me a lot about her life story and how she had been battling cancer. And we got to the car, and Kirk goes, Mom, everybody tells you their life story, even strangers, people you don't know, they tell you their life story. Why? And I told him, I said, I mean it when I smile, and I mean it when I ask them, how are they doing? I mean that. I don't know if my conversation meant anything or if it had any, any impact on that lady that day. I pray it did. But just because we may not receive results doesn't mean there wasn't an impact. Just because you don't know what's going on doesn't, doesn't mean that the smile you give hasn't provided some comfort. Some of us plant the seeds. Some of us water the seeds. And some of us get to see the flower go, grow. We are all different. And as such, we have different jobs in the kingdom of God here on earth. What if everybody sang in the choir? I know Don would be ecstatic. <laughs> <laughs> but who would cook the meals? Who would greet the people that walk in the front door? Who would take up the offering? We all have special jobs. God has planted in every one of you, in me, a special gift. And we need to use that gift. Perhaps the Lord will meet us. Just like Jonathan, each of us sits under our own pomegranate tree. 
and we are given the chance to crawl out on our hands and feet to do something for God. We, myself included, sometimes position ourselves this way. God, I'll speak, I'll serve, I'll go. If you show me something, if you give me a sign, any kind of sign, we are looking for fleece moments. How many opportunities have we missed because we sat at home or we sat in the pew waiting for a sign? As a child, I remember asking God if he would write, I know it sounds silly now, but if he would write in the sky with the clouds the message I needed to hear so I knew which way to go. Don't get me wrong, I strongly, be, I strongly believe God can send us a sign, and I believe God can talk to us in an audible voice. But I also believe, and I know for a fact because the Bible tells us, God said if you will only have the faith of a mustard seed. Several um, weeks ago, our pastor, gave us this story, and I've asked him if I could reuse it. There was a honeymoon, a couple who had just gotten married, and it was their wedding night, and their parents had um, paid for the hotel, and they were exhausted from the day's activities, and so they show up at the hotel, and they walk in the room, and they see this little bitty room with a bed that pulls out from the couch, and just a little table, and they're thinking, wow, you know, we knew our parents like to save money, but wow, it's our wedding night, and it's just this little bitty, bitty room, and oh well, you know, we thank them for what they did, and they pull the bed out, and it's all lumpy, and they, it's just not what they expected, and so they get up the next morning, and they go to check out to go on their honeymoon, and the, um, man standing at the desk said, how did you like your room? Was it wonderful? And they said, well, you know, not really. It was just this little bitty room and we pulled the bed out from the ca this couch bed and we expected so much more. And he goes, well, why didn't you open the door that was there at the room? And they said, well, we thought about it, but we were like, it's probably a closet. And he goes, you were in the entryway. Had you opened the door, you would have seen this lavish room with a gorgeous bed and food already prepared for you. Your parents spent lots of money. Isn't that just like us? That sometimes we don't open the door that God's placed in front of us, that we didn't have the faith that perhaps God would meet us and we missed out? I think we should simply say is, what we should simply say is perhaps if I step out in faith, God just might show up. Perhaps if I join UMW, perhaps if I volunteer for, volunteer for TNT, perhaps if I join the choir, perhaps if I help with the Christmas activities, the adoptions of the children for gifts. Perhaps if I help with disaster recovery. Perhaps if I help with the cookie walk. Perhaps if I volunteer to be a greeter. Perhaps if I smile. Perhaps if I say a kind word. Perhaps the Lord will meet us there and lives will be changed forever. Thank you, Marilyn. I believe now we have a song, and after the song, I'm going to ask Mary Jean if she will say the blessing for the meal, and then we'll do the benediction.
for our meal. And any of you who um, are guests today, I want to invite you to be my guest for lunch. So pretty, pretty easy. The rest of the UMW cooks and I invite you. Okay. <laughs> Holy God, we thank you so much for the food, the opportunity that we have today together. We thank you for this wonderful service and we Pray your blessing on all of those who have been a part of this, as well as all of those who have produced and transported and prepared our food. And we ask your blessing as we gather together in your fellowship to meet each other, to get to know each other at deeper levels, and to celebrate together the goodness that you pour out upon us. In Jesus' holy name, amen. And if you would all please join with Maureen in the benediction that's printed in your bulletin. Oh, holy God, open unto me light for my darkness, courage for my fear, hope for my despair. Oh, loving God, open unto me wisdom for my confusion, forgiveness for my sins, love for my hate. O oh God of peace, open unto me peace for my turmoil, joy for my sorrow, strength for my weakness. O oh generous God, open my heart to receive all your gifts. Amen. Please join us for dinner.